Hey yo, Skrill. What's happening, dog? Nothing much, dog. Just making some sick new beats, man. How have you been? I've been mad decent. I was just wondering if you want to come with me to the third world country and check out the music scene there so we can rip off the style and say we're heavily inspired by the urban beats. Sure, man. That sounds like a lot of fun. Hey, Skrill. Yeah, dude? Can I ask you, with an umlaut over it, something? Sure. Anything, Thomas Wesley Pence. Want to jack each other off in the private jet later? I thought you, with an umlaut over it, would never ask. Yo, Skrill. Drop it hard. Bong, 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 get on. Hello everyone, it is me, Frank Jeff C, and in this video review, I'm going to be reviewing the debut album, Jack U by Jack U, which is Skrillex and Diplo. The album opens up with the track, Take Drugs and Listen to Jack U. Skrillex and Diplo get really high or whatever, and they make an atmospheric track. In the track, they slow down their vocals, but make sure the pitch remains the same, so it creates that weird artificial sound. And it's very meta because Diplo talks about shooting something up your butt in the track. The track ends with Diplo saying holes and then it just loops. The album officially starts with the track Beats Knocking featuring Flyboy Kino. I can only assume Flyboy Kino is the rapper who says his beats come a knockin'. Although that's a total lie because Diplo and Skrillex made the beats and I doubt he had any say in the production of the beats. I don't like when people lie on beats. I like when they tell the truth on beats. He should have been more truthful and said Skrillex and Diplo made these beats. Then Flyboy Kino lies again when he says slow it down, slow it down. And the track doesn't even slow down in tempo, it just stays the same. Stop lying to me, Flyboy. Speaking of flies, the lead synth in the song sounds like a fly buzzing around my ear holes. But it's like a really cool hip-hop fly with a giant gold chain that says fly and basketball sneakers. The next track, Jack You, Take You, featuring Keija. The track features Canadian Sharp Suter singing, dancing, uh, handstanding Lucille Ball look-alike singer Keija doing her famous yell singing. Keija appears to be singing about someone who's so fucking hot that she's like, oh my god, I normally don't do this, but you're so hot that I think about having sex with you a lot and you send blood rushing straight to my genital region. As we all know, when people sing about love, it's actually just a PG version for fucking. Then the chorus is Keija doing her trademark oohs and ahs while saying baby a lot, or babe. And you know, there's some classy air horns in there. The drop <laughs> is the most stupidest drop. I have ever heard in my entire life. And I listen to a bunch of horrible electronic dance music. I know for a fact Skrillex and Diplo are trolling the entire world when they made this drop. They were like, hey, let's put the most stupidest sounding bonk noises and an 808 sub kick in there. And if people are still dancing, then we know we've made it. The next track is Febreze featuring 2 Chains. We all know who 2 Chains is because he's really fucking tall and he's been featured in every single track that came out in 2013 like in Mercy and fucking Problems. So he starts off the track by saying, yes, I'm the shit, I should have Febreze on me. I like when songs mention the title of the song in the song. And then after it goes straight into the drop and the track literally fucking farts on you. I'm not even joking, the track literally shits on your face on purpose. And then Skrillex uses his traditional elephant slaughtering sounding synth to make that whole Arabic sounding melody that people like in their trap music. I like when 2 Chainz tells the audience that they're Jafakin. Then the track ends with some like Panic at the Disco first album radio static noise and then you can hear Diplo and Skrillex in a car and then it's over. They're just trolling us. And by us, I mean you with an umlaut over it. The next track is To You with an umlaut over it, featuring Aluna George. This is the best track on the entire album, in my opinion. This track needs to get played on the radio. It has all the modern EDM future bass tropes, and what this track has over all the other tracks is that it actually has an original sounding drop. It has all those progressive elements of a future track, or you know those pretentious fucks who like putting the word future in their tracks so that it can sell more copies. I love that the track explores new sounds and variations of the same tired EDM tropes over and over again. I also like how it starts off with this it sounds Caribbean sounding marching trumpet thing going on. Also, it's the only track after I first heard this album that I could still hear playing in my head like the next day. Like I'd wake up and I'd hear like da 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 
to you, to you, to you. How can I get back to you? <laughs> That's what I love about EDM is like you can make songs that have never existed before and explore sonic landscapes. And I think that's more important than recreating the same track over and over again until you have a genre named after it. Now, Aluna George is the electronic duo from the UK. Aluna sings, George produces. I'm not clear whether or not George had any production in this Jack U track. I like to believe he did. In the track, Aluna laments her tortured love life by saying, um, leaving is the hardest thing to do, but being left is harder, yes, is true. And these lines stab me fucking right here. That's in the heart. You know, because we all subconsciously project our own images and feelings onto these lyrics. So I can really feel that line. I, however, as a singer-songwriter, wonder who Aluna George is singing to. To show how much of a nerd I am, I have this headcanon that Aluna is just singing to George and all their songs are about each other. And I know it's hard to have like a professional singer-songwriter relationship with someone, but you know if you're in a boy-girl duo, you know they're totally... I mean, sometimes they're brother and sister duo, but you know, if you're making music with someone, the next track is Jungle Bay featuring Bungie Garland. I get a lot of requests for the genre Jungle Terror, and I believe this track is Jungle Terror because it's fucking terrifying. Bungie Garland is the main vocal in this track, and he's telling everyone to put their hands up. Like, honestly, if I was in a jungle and I heard that man's voice, I'd shit myself. I've always been a sucker for Trinidadian accented vocals telling me to do stuff. As soon as those vocals came in, I was like, don't shoot. The drop reminds me of running through a jungle at night and I'm terrified and there's a bunch of lemurs and these Zabumafu motherfuckers are throwing rocks and shit at me because I am a stranger on an island in the night. The next song is called Mind and it features Kai and I don't know why they didn't just call this song Love Again. Or I'll teach you to love again with a U umlaut thing over it. It's called Mine because why the fuck not? The song features Kai and Sunny Moore from the sensational pop band from first to last singing about teaching each other how to love again. There is some Paps Blue Ribbon and R&B influenced beats going on here. However, you know there's huge major label backing. The next track, Holla Out, features Snails and Tarantula, which I believe is how you say that. The drop in this track is unique, but that's probably attributed by the Ausla label mate um, artist Snails, who for being named after a slow moving mollusk, Sir does make fast beats. The drop also has the best fucking duck synth I've ever heard in my entire life. If you're looking for music that has a duck synth in it, look no further. You have found the number one duck synth track of all time. It sounds like Donald Duck and Daffy Duck are going quackers with each other, if you know what I mean. The track ends with like more talking and outtakes to show that, you know, Skrillex and Diplo are just normal people, only you know with millions and millions of dollars for pressing play in front of large groups of people. Finally, the final track and main reason why I made this video, Where Are You Now? featuring the infamous pop celebrity Justin Bieber. Did I lose all respect for my idol Skrillex upon hearing about this collaboration? As a musician, you have to take risks. And some of those risks include collaborating with a singer, songwriter, I can't even say songwriter because he doesn't write his own songs, with an image that sells copies. The music industry is incredibly competitive. That's why everyone is sucking Taylor Swift's dick right now, even Apple, because she's like the number one selling artist in the world. Justin Bieber has like fucking I think 20 million fans and he sells roughly like 5 million to 7 million copies of any song that he's on. So Skrillex and Diplo, it's an obvious business transaction with this song. The song was written by like four people. I think there's this guy named Pooh Bear who writes all of Justin Bieber's tracks. The lyrics however confuse me a bit because I feel like they're a bit manipulative to little girls like i understand he understands his fan base everyone understands his fan base but his lyrics are specifically like where are you now here i am singing a song why aren't you giving me your money the lyrics paint this 
image of an abusive relationship almost. It's like here's this guy saying like, where are you? I really needed you. Why aren't you listening to me anymore? Is it because of Selena? And the drop is just Justin Bieber's vocals turned into a synth going, <laughs> I really like the bonk sounds though, because you know that jungle ship from like 1996 is coming back with a bonk, 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 bonk. You can also. That track is basically Lean On, but with another female vocal on it. And don't even get me started about that music video. They basically, like, what, opened up an artist shop and they were like, hey, for free, draw your image on these screens and we'll put them in the music video. And it's just Justin Bieber standing there moving around like the puppet that he is. I like how Skrillex said that this album felt yellow to him. And for an album to feel yellow to me, it needs to be C major. And I don't feel like these tracks were in C major. I mean, some of them felt like they were E minor. This track actually felt more orangey to me than yellow. What I would rate this track is jacking off in a tropical paradise with your collaborative co-producer on top of this big mansion overlooking the ocean. And there's all these slums and there's all these little you know, native kids wearing their tattered clothes, raising their hands up to the sky and saying to the gods above, please, let us jump. So yeah, that's how I review albums. Um, if you want to see more electronic dance music reviews, just mention in the comments below whether or not you want to see me talk about other albums and stuff. I just wanted to do this as an experiment. So yeah, I love you babies. So keep on being aesthetic and see you in the next video.